Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back for Wellness Wednesday, episode number 16. So today we are getting case specific and talking about ankle sprains. Okay, so super common with the athlete or just the everyday human, uh, whether you've had an ankle sprain or not. Uh, so what happens? So the most common ankle sprain that we see is an inversion ankle sprain, meaning that the foot rolls inward while the ankle goes outward. If we step on something wrong, if we land wrong, things like that. And what happens is the ligament called the ATFL, anterior, anterior talofibular ligament, uh, and I'll post a picture in the comments so you guys can see what ligament. That one is most commonly damaged. Now, depending on how severe it is, really kind of dictates where we go with care, okay? So a lot of times we have to rule out fracture because if it's fractured, then we need to immobilize it, we need to do the necessary things to make sure that it can heal properly. But more times than not, then uh, we, don't, we don't really have the fracture, okay? So we, we use the x-ray to determine if that is and then some other uh, provocative test to see if we need to get that further imaging. But a lot of times, like I said, it's not the fracture that's a concern. It's more just that ligamentous damage that causes the swelling, that causes the bruising uh, and the pain that you're feeling. Okay, so with ankle sprains, once we ruled out all those red flags, we need to get you moving and get you healing, okay? So old protocol was rice. Rest, ice, compress, and elevate. That one is out of the window. The guy who came up with that actually said that rest is actually not what we need to do. We need to load those tissues to get more blood flow pump into the area to get those muscles, tendons, ligaments, everything moving so we can get the healing process started a lot faster. Okay, so that inflammatory process that we have going on in the ankle with the swelling, the bruising, uh, you name it, that's actually a good thing because we're bringing new blood flow to the area. It's the body's natural inflammatory response that it needs to go through to kickstart that healing process and go through it. So a lot of times also we try and avoid any over-the-counter anti-inflammatories and even ice, okay? Ice is gonna freeze it and help kind of numb that pain. Well, if we can get by without those anti-inflammatories or ice, then we can kind of keep going with that uh, blood flow to get things moving. Now, there's times when it's super acute and it's really painful, hard to walk on, and we may need those interventions. That's totally fine. We're gonna work with them and then continue to do other things that I'll talk about here in a little bit, what we do in the office to help with ankle sprains. Okay, so once we kind of determine what degree it is, if it's, uh, healthy enough that we can actually load it, get it moving, uh, not rice it, but more police it. So protecting, uh, if it's super acute, if we need to do that in the interim with bracing, taping, things like that, and then load it, okay? The earlier on that we can get more load or movement to that ankle, the better you are long-term, because like I said, it just kickstarts that uh, inflammatory process to move through the next cascade as it is healing and it can give those tissues a lot more response. So when we get that ankle sprain, that ligamentous interruption, that damage, um, we lose a lot of proprioception, meaning we don't have the right balance that we need to be able to get back and return to play. So things that we do in here to improve that is a lot of balance work, adjusting after we get through that acute phase, so light mobilization just to keep that foot moving. Um, so then we can uh, rebuild that balance so then we can prevent it again. Really cool study came out and said that uh, if you wanna prevent future sprains, so if you sprain your ankle, more than likely if you aren't doing the right therapy to kinda prevent it in the long term, a lot of times people re-sprain it just because that laxity is hard to rebuild back um, to make the ligaments stronger. So your chances are a little bit increased if you sprained your ankle before. But what you can do, and that study showed, is that if you spend five minutes a day working on balance, you have a 77% less chance of re-spraining that ankle. Okay, so a lot of stuff that your PT or athletic trainer with that balance work, absolutely perfect. Okay, so now there's other stuff that we can start to build in here that we can do at the office to kickstart and speed the process up a little bit so you can get return to play. Uh, if you're an athlete that did it, say, coming down, landing on someone's uh, foot in volleyball, 
uh, basketball, things like that, or if you're just uh, every day running the mill, walking the sidewalks, and you kind of step wrong and kind of tweak that ankle. Well, we can do things in here like dry needling to help get blood flow to the area. We can tape it to help stabilize. Uh, we can laser it, which really helps that kind of kickstart metabolism, that photobiomodulation that I talked about. And then the light mobilization, adjusting when ready, so we can just keep everything moving. Okay, so we're gonna load it, we're gonna do all the necessary stuff to rebuild that stability. And the next thing that people uh, like to ask is about bracing. Do we need to brace that? So in the beginning, maybe we're gonna brace it, but we need to get rid of that external stimuli or those external cues to stabilize the ankle and we need to give us more of that natural stability. So a lot of what we do in here with the exercises, uh, we're building up that strength of the ligaments and tendons so then we can uh, avoid those stability things. Now, we have a really good tape job that we can also use to get you back to play if it's that super acute thing um, as well. But ankle sprains, don't let them freak you out. Yeah, they hurt, yeah, they take a little bit to heal, but a lot of what we do in here can really speed up the process of healing and getting you back to play sooner. Um, and a lot of times we don't need those further interventions unless if it is warranted, if there's a fracture or if it's a full thickness tear of that ligament. Um, and you have a future of playing sports, then we're going to look into something more, uh, more extreme to help you get back to play sooner. But little things that we do in the office, little things that you can do at home, keeping it moving and not immobilizing it uh, is key for those ankle sprains. So if you or anyone you know, athletes in the area um, who have sprained their ankle, who have done it in the past, come and see us because we can definitely help you out and help hopefully prevent future sprains uh, from sitting you out from the season. So with that, uh, I want to wish you all a great rest of your Wednesday and a great weekend with Labor Day coming up. Uh, have a great Monday off and we will see you all back on Tuesday. See you everyone.